I'm creating a YouTube playlist that is going to be all about how to read call manager traces. And I'll go over different types of calls, such as real simple calls where you have two phones on the same server um, calling each other. And then I'll go into something a little more complex, which would be one phone registered to server A, and then another phone registered to server B in the same call manager cluster. So two nodes in the same cluster, but it's a little bit more complex because now we're adding in more than one server. And then eventually down the road, I'd start getting into some other things like uh, call hold, transfers, uh, voicemail, conferencing, trans, uh, transcoding, you know, more of the complex type of things. The logs that I'll be going through before I analyze them, I will upload them to this GitHub repository right here, which the first set of the first example I'm going to do is this one here, which is phone to phone, same node. Before I get into analyzing that file, I want to take a look at this screen over here where we can see the um, SIP signaling diagram here. And this, this proxy here would actually be our uh, CUCM. It's not very clear, but you know what that says. We'll box that in like this. And then this would be a phone over here. And then we'd have another phone over here. And they would both be registered to the same call manager, same node. Now I am only doing SIP phones. I'm not doing skinny phones. So this call flow is exactly what I would expect to see in the call manager logs. But of course, this is just showing us the SIP side of things. It's not showing us the processes that take place within the call manager application. All right, so this phone, when it dials um, over here will be 1000. Actually, this is 1001. So let me redo that. That's 1001. And this one over here is 1000. All right, so 1000 calls 1001. When 1000 dials, it's going to send an invite over to the call manager. And while call manager starts looking up that phone number, it's going to send back a 100 trying, letting the phone know that it received the invite and that it's trying to process it. At the same time, it's going to send out an invite over here once it actually finds the phone number and identifies what device is associated with that phone number. We should get back a 180 ringing from the far end phone and that should be forwarded to the calling phone basically to let that phone know, hey, you should play a ringing tone to let the calling party know that the call is still in, in progress. It's in the alerting state. And that way the person that's making the call doesn't just hang up. We need to give them some sort of information to let them know that the call is still moving forward. Eventually, the person at the called phone will answer. And when they answer, there will be a SIP 200 OK. Once, once call manager receives it, then it will forward on the 200 OK to the calling side. And the calling side will send an act over here, which will then go over to the called phone. And at this point, we have the call established and there's media taking place. Eventually somebody will hang up and there will be a buy that's exchanged and then we'll send a 200 okay for that buy. 
this is what we should expect to see. Something similar at the very least, something similar to what is on the screen right now. With that said, I can now go ahead and take a look in the logs. I have my directory right here, so I'll copy that out and I'll go to Notepad++ and I hit Control Shift F and I can paste the directory here. And since I know the dial digits, I know the called number is 1001, I can put in here DD equals 1001. That's short, this DD is short for dial digits. I only get one hit here, and that's because I'm doing this in a lab environment. But if I weren't doing it in a lab environment, there's a few things that I would need to know. And those would be the time of the call, because if you're on a production environment, 1000 might call 1001 you know, 10 times in the past five minutes. And we need to know specifically which call is the one that failed. So we want to know the timestamp of the call. And of course you want to know the, uh, the calling number and you want to know the called number as well, right? DNIS is something that people say for the called number. And what we could call the calling number is the Annie. That's, that's what people call the calling number at times, Dennis and Annie. So these are the things that we want to know, the time, the calling number, and the called number. Once we have all that, we can go into the logs and find the call like we've already done. And right here, we want to start marking up the logs. I use a space and then five pound signs. Then I'll put in whatever my, my note is. This is digit analysis. Before I go any further, I want to make note that you can see some of my text is underlined or a different color or it's bold. Um, there should be some red in here. Yeah, that's because I'm using a custom language. But if you go in here, you can see it's set to CUCM traces. I've uploaded that custom language to the GitHub repository here. So when you download it, you can have the custom language, which you can then upload to Notepad++. All right. Once we've found this number, we can scroll down and look for this particular line where we see the wait DM PID response, which is device number device manager PID response. And at the end of that line, we can find the CI, which is the call identifier. And I'll mark that as style token one, since this is the first CI. Then I'll do control shift F and I'll find all of the hits for that particular CI. When we scroll down, we can look for a line like this and see that the CI is included in the SIP signaling. I'll use this as the first CI because as the uh, style token one, because this is still the uh, first side of the call. This is the calling parties side of the call. Mark this up real quick. And now I can take this SIP call ID and search on that. Now we have the invite that came in from the calling party. We have the 100 trying that was sent out to the calling party. A 
It's the 180 ringing that was sent. 200 okay. One thing you should notice is right here, it tells us the direction. So if it's outgoing, then that means call manager is sending it to the device, which is why here I wrote sent to the calling phone. If it says incoming, then that means that the device is the one that sent it into the call manager. Call manager is the recipient of the message. And then here we have the final SIP message for the calling phone. And this is an incoming 200 OK, which is in response to the buy. So now that we have that, we can do a, a search on this and you can start to see that we can get a high level view of the call. And I'm going to go back to my search for the CI here and find the part where CIA, CI, the, the first CI is associated with the second CI. We see that right here. And usually what I do for this one is I just copy it and paste it here. Now that we have this, we can search on the second CI. And if it wasn't clear earlier, I just want to reiterate that each member of a call, each party, of a call, however you want to say it, is going to have its own call identifier. That's what we call the call legs. So when, let me, let me get the annotator back up again real quick. Actually, I'll open up the call flow again real quick. And we'll do this. So when we are looking at the, the, the SIP signaling, this half of the call is one call leg. And this side of the call is another call leg. So we've got the first call leg and the second call leg, which would then be the way in which we track those in the logs is CI one and CI two. And as you go back here, you can see that they are in numerical order. It's not always going to end with a one and a two It's just kind of, I guess I got lucky that way. All right. So now that we have CI two, we can search on it. We've done that. And we should see right here an invite that is being sent out to the called phone. I'll highlight this SIP call ID as the style token too. Then I can search on that. Here's where the called phone sends us the 100 trying that it's trying to process the call itself.
So the phone sent a 180 ringing to the call manager. Now at this point, somebody picked up the phone. So that phone sends a 200 okay. Letting us know that it's been answered. 200 okay received from calling phone. And then we send a 200 OK to the called phone because we have to acknowledge their buy. All right, we can do a Control Shift F and search for this now. So now when we go through the traces, we can see here that call manager receives an invite from the calling phone. I'll highlight that. Then call manager sends the calling phone a 100 trying, letting them know that the call is being processed. And while call manager does the processing of the call, one of the most important things it does is a digit analysis. And this is essentially the call manager trying to find an entry for the telephone number 1001. The entry is found and we create CI1. Eventually we create CI2 and then we associate the two CIs as seen here. An invite is sent out to this, the called phone And the called phone sends back to call manager a 100 trying. Shortly after it sends in a 180 ringing. That 180 ringing that call manager received is forwarded on to the calling phone to let them know that they should play the ringing tone so that the calling party knows that the far end phone is ringing and waiting for somebody to answer. Once somebody actually does answer, the called phone sends call manager a 200 OK. And call manager sends an ACK over to the called phone. The 200 OK is forwarded from the call manager onto the calling party. And the calling phone sends an ACK. If we take a look at this time here, it's 23, 22, 31. And we're going to take a look at the buy. The buy is at 23, 22, 39. So that's eight seconds later, the called phone sent a buy to the CUCM, terminating the call. The call manager then takes that buy and forwards it onto the calling phone. Call manager sends a 200 OK to the called phone, acknowledging the, uh, the buy that was received earlier. And also the calling phone does the same thing. It sends a 200 okay to the call manager in a response as a response to the buy as well.